on, um, not next week, but the week after next, I'll be gone Monday and Wednesday, and my boy Andrew will be here to teach you all, of, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, he'll be here to teach you all about relativity, which is like the coolest thing to teach, and he gets to do it, because I will be in San Diego at a conference, but anyway, life's hard that way. Um, what's that? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Oh, the other thing, too. Um, some of you, Jeremy's not here, but, but Alicia sent me an email. I understand Mastering Physics decided to go south on you last night. Even though they put up, I don't know if you all noticed this, but during the week they put up a thing saying Mastering Physics will shut down between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m. on this date. Guess what? They gave you Greenwich time. All right, so in London, between 6 and 9 a.m. Friday morning, it was down, all right, which meant, so why they did, I don't know why they gave us Greenwich time, but they did is what I figured out, because sure enough, at 9 o'clock last night, boy, my emails just lit up with the Physics 1 students, and I was kind of snarky with them at first, and I had to apologize. I sent another email later and said, I'm sorry, because at first I was like, why are you crying? This has been assigned for two and a half hour, for two and a half weeks, you know, and now you're whining about it. But anyway, um, but then I realized that you guys have tons of stuff to do. So if something's due in two weeks, yeah, you, if you're like me, you you think like Labradors. That's two weeks is like an eternity from now. I don't care. All right, I'm doing what's right now. What's due tomorrow? All right. Anyway, all right. So anyway, um, let's talk about. <laughs> Let's talk about what you came here to talk about. What's that? Yeah, yeah. So it's going. You can. You got to like almost midnight Monday to get the to get chapter twenty two in or twenty three. Exactly. It, it shut down. They were, they were doing maintenance Greenwich time, which was great. So, yes. <laughs> yes. I'm going to give him that authority because I want you to come. But anyway, what? I, I'm sorry, Stacy. Yes. What? You. Okay. Oh, this is good. Yeah, let's talk about this. All right. If you noticed, chapters 24 and 25 are combined. All right. And then we've got relativity, which is 26. And I'm hoping to get to quantum. Hoping, hoping. But we may not. All right, so basically you've got two assignments left. I haven't put 26 up yet. 26 will be the last one. So what right. chapter are going to be on our next set? Uh, 15 through 26. No, I'm kidding. Um, the uh, whatever, 24 through 26, basically. No, 24 through, if we get to quantum, 27. Yeah, 24 to the end. That's basically it. And most of them will probably come from 24. And a little bit, all right, I'll be honest with you, nothing is going to come from 25. That's the human eye, telescope, and microscope type stuff. But you do have homework over it, but all your homework questions are ones with all the hints and everything. So it's basically a self-study chapter is what I'm giving you, to be honest with you. But we will, but on Monday, we'll probably go over chapter 25. We'll just kind of look at this stuff, because it is cool. Uh, and most of you are pre-med or pre-dental and or pre-farm so you should know how the human eye works and all that kind of stuff just see it for once see it once so any future optometrists here no future optometrists okay all right all right well anyway what we're going to talk about now is one of the more difficult things for people to understand and that's thin film interference we learned about we learned about um we learned about two kinds of bubbles on wednesday but anyway um we also learned about uh, uh, why there's, uh, we learned about thin film interference. Basically what happens is we have interference of wavelengths, okay? All right, so here's how we do this. Here's how we do this. Now what happens is when the light comes in, now notice, now when the light comes in, it comes in here and, and it, hits this, um, it hits this surface here and then it reflects out. Now notice. If N0 is less than, if it's incoming, 
and it hits a and it hits a uh, index of refraction that's higher than the than the air or where the, where it's coming from, you're going to have a phase shift of 180. Or what I prefer is one will be lambda over two. Okay, all right. So in other words, uh, and and then if you come in, if you come in this way, if you're coming in here and bang, notice. Oil is greater than water, has an index of refraction that's greater than water, so there's no phase shift when it reflects. All right? So there's no lambda over 2 there, phase shift. So what we're going to do, I think the best way to explain this, um, and this is the kind of diffraction patterns that you get, okay, with when you put oil on water. Now notice what the razor blade is doing is that it's, it's giving us different given us different thicknesses, so different colors basically are, are being reflected out because of the thin film interference that takes place. All right, so let's look at, and then here's some other examples of it, all right? All right, so now, here's what happens. On thin film interference, in determining whether the interference will be constructive or destructive, we must take into account not only the path length difference, but also whether or not the phase shifts on the reflection and the fact that the wavelength is shorter than than the film in the air. Okay, so constructive interference occurs when the thickness of the film is given by um, T equals M times lambda, where lambda is the uh, wavelength in the film. Oh, no, it's the actual wavelength divided by the, uh, this is the uh, index of refraction of the film. Now, here's the way I teach this. All right, that's their way. I didn't like it. So. Here's the other way to do this. When you get a thin, because I guarantee you, I will, I will bet uh, money. In fact, in fact, let's do this. Um, your homework problem, I think I gave you a solar cell. Okay, so for those of you who came, let's do one of your homework problems from this thing. Let's do chapter 20, uh, problem 21 on the homework. I thought it was kind of cool because it's a solar cell. And um, it's designed, let me show you what the problem is. Here's what the problem says. All right. Whoops. It's on this side. I need to take dot cam 101. Never took that. Even though in the School of Education, I remember that's one reason why I got out of education when I was an undergrad and then kind of got back into it when I became an adult. But anyway was because they ha actually had classes on how to work this stuff, and I thought, what a waste of time, you know. But it turns out that it's not so much, but OJT to me. All right, School of Education, OJT, same thing. Anyway, a solar cell, a solar cell is designed to have a non-reflective film of transparent material for a wavelength of 550 nanometers. Okay, will the thickness of the film depend on the index of refraction of the underlying material in the solar cell? Discuss possible scenarios. Uh, okay, now the index of refraction, basically what we're after. When we want it to be non-reflecting, we want it to be non-reflecting, what we're talking about is what kind of interference do we want? Constructive or destructive? Destructive. We want it to wipe each other out, okay? Um, oh, dear, I gave one that you're actually going to have to write down answers that I won't grade, but that's okay. Um, and it says discuss whatever. All right, now. If the end of the solar battery is, e is greater than end of the film, whoops, gosh dang it. All right, there we go. All right, so here's what it says. Keep going. All right, if in, and the end of the film is 1.22, okay, what is the minimum thickness of the film? And repeat the calculation of if the index or refraction of the solar battery is less than the film. So here's how you do these problems. All right, let's just take a look. Here's what they're saying. You're, you all are probably going, what? I don't even understand what the question's asking. Here's what the question's asking. We've got three, we've got a film here. Here's my film, okay? Here's my film, and um, here's the end of the solar. Here's the end of the, non -ref of the reflecting film, okay? And here's end of air. This is what we're doing, okay? So let's just project this out. Now, we're going to draw this, these rays. 
<laughs> so much for that. But anyway, we're going to draw these rays at angles so that you can see them. But actually, we're going to say they're almost perpendicular. So this comes in, and this will bend, of course, towards here. And we want to find this thickness, and this will bounce. Now, when it hits here, it hits the first surface, okay, and comes back to our eyeball. So this will be our one. And then it hits here at this surface, and it comes back like this, and this will be our two. Now, what we have to do, here, whoa, here's how we set these up every single time, and it works. Because I guarantee you, I'm going to ask you on your, on your last test, it's going to be May, it's going to be 8 o'clock in the morning, it's going to be a day like this, and you won't want to be here. So you're going to, yeah, I, sorry. Now, I will give you the option, you can come take it on Tuesday with my other class, and, uh, with, my one, with my 210 class, because we've got lots of room. So if you want to get it out of the way on Tuesday of finals week, you can do that too. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you can take it Thursday. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So anyway, um, so anyway, what we want to do is we want to find the thickness of the film. Now, for on phase one, this was actually going to be the quiz I was going to give you, but since a lot of people are still taking their orgo test, we'll let that go. But anyway, um, I was going to say, now, air to the film, is this index of refraction higher or lower is air higher or lower than the film lower so it's coming from a lower and it's reflecting off a higher so it goes through a phase shift of lambda over 2 goes through a phase shift of lambda over 2 where lambda prime we'll call it lambda prime equals lambda over in of the film Okay, where lambda prime equals the lambda of time divided by the n of the film. All right, now then, this, the first problem said this. It said that the n of the film, that the n of the film is greater than, the n of the film is, ah, I want to make sure, hold on a second. No, the n of the solar N of the solar for the first part is greater than N of the film. That's what it said for the first, for the first thing we're doing. All right, so since N of the solar is greater than N of the film, so when this comes in here and bounces off, and bounces off, um, do we have a phase shift? Yes. Yes, because, because this guy's smaller than this guy. So at the reflective boundary, we have another one. We've got lambda prime over 2. OK? All right, now, what we have to do is we have to find the thickness. Now, for, construct, for destructive interference, for destructive interference, it looks like this. What does the end mean? Index of refraction. Like we found on the test, you know, with the air, different materials like water, oil, glass, diamonds have different indexes of refraction. Okay, so for destructive interference, we learned this. We learned this, that um, the change in L, the change in the wavelength, is equal to um, uh, one-half M times lambda or three halves m times lambda, or five halves m. Wait, I'm putting the m's in there. One half lambda, or five halves lambda. Those kind of things where m is equal to m is equal to zero, one, two, three. Here's the basic formula: delta l equals uh, m plus one half times um, lambda, okay, where m is equal to zero. All right, so now, to have construct, to have find the minimum thickness then, to find the minimum thickness when this happens, we've got this film, we've got two phase shifts, so this is how you set up your equ equation. Notice, this thing has to go through 
2 T, it goes, goes through the thickness twice. So you've got 2 T plus, now what we're trying to do is we're trying to find the difference basically in the wavelength between this wave and this wave. So the difference in those wavelengths would be 2 T plus, how many phase shifts were there? Two. two. So we've got lambda prime over 2 plus lambda prime over 2 equals, here you go, equals um, either 1 half of lambda prime or 3 halves because we want that destructive interference lambda prime or 5 halves lambda prime. Now notice, let's go ahead and do our addition here. What's lambda over 2, lambda prime over 2 plus lambda prime over 2? Yes, yeah, lambda prime. So we've got 2t plus lambda prime then equals, now, to find the thickness, I'm going to have to subtract lambda prime from one of these. So which one of these, if I want to find the minimum, if I go with this guy, what's going to happen? I'm going to get a negative sign, right? It's going to come out to be negative. I can't have a negative thickness, all right? In other words, if you don't see what I mean, let's go with this guy first. Let's try him first. One half lambda prime. Okay. Now solve for two. T, solve for t. What do you do? You subtract lambda prime from both sides. And you go. Whoops. I can't have a negative thickness. That's what I was talking about. So maybe we should go up to the next wavelength. This one. So we go up to the next one, and we go two t plus lambda prime equals 3 halves lambda prime, and we wind up with 2t equals 1 half lambda prime, when I subtract lambda prime from both sides, and then so t winds up to be 1 fourth of the thickness of the wavelength. That's all the thicker it needs to be to have destructive interference, okay? Is I just make that I just put that film on there for the, uh, I put that um, film at only one-fourth the wavelength in the film, in the film, okay? All right. Let's try another one, just so we got this down, because this is kind of, this kind of, this is always kind of tricky for for folks the first time they do it. All right, let's take a look at, um, and then on the other one, all right, so now, let's figure it out. Let's figure out if we got to do it for the other one, which says this. Uh, I'll just put this over here in case somebody wants to. All right. Let's look at this one. Now, this was the other case. Um, this was the other case where we had, uh, end of the solar is actually less than end of the film. And here we've got the, the end of the film here. We've got the film and, oops, I didn't mean to draw this one here. And this is air. All right. So let's take a look at what's going on here. Now this time the, the light ray comes in from the air, reflects out, and I get this, yep. Okay, there's my first reflection. Now then, when air hits the film, do I have a wavelength shift? Yes. yes. Which would be lambda prime over 2, where lambda prime, again, equals lambda over in in the film. And you probably can't see that at all, can you? There we go. All right, now then. Part of it goes through the film, of course, kind of ref reflects into here, boom, bounces, reflects back. And now I've got this two. Is there a phase shift with this, with this um, wave here? Is there? Because it's, it's going from higher to lower. So is there, is there a phase shift? No. So that phase shift is zero. So now we can find the thickness of the film for destructive interference, where again we go, okay, we've go 2t plus 
Basically, here's what you're doing. Plus 1 plus 2 equals, and for destructive, for destructive interference, you say, okay, I've got my choices of 1 half lambda prime, or 3 halves lambda prime, or 5 halves lambda prime, all the way up to 7 halves, 9 halves, all of those. Okay? Yes? Uh, that's the thickness here. Because we're finding the difference in the wavelength, so T is going once and then twice. Okay? Good question. It's a great question. So for destructive interference, you have this. What would it be for constructive interference? What would I put on the right hand of my side of my equation? Do you know? Negative. Nope. One. Yeah, exactly. You'd have one, two, three, four, eh, three, four five, six. M equals one, two, three, four, five, six. You don't want M equals zero because when M equals zero, you've got no thickness. Okay? You got nothing. There's nothing there. All right? So you start with M equals one. All right, so now, so now I go, okay, I got this. You can go, okay, 2t plus 1 was lambda prime over 2 plus 0 equals, now which one of these should I pick? What if I pick this guy? What happens? It goes to 0, and I get 0 thickness. That doesn't work. I need a minimum thickness that's not 0, all right? So which one should I pick? This guy, okay? So I picked that guy, and he's 3 halves lambda prime, and so I get 2t equals um, lambda prime. Because when I take, if I have 3 half dollars and I take away 1 half dollar, I got 2 half dollars, which is 1, right? So I got 1. So t equals lambda over 2. Lambda prime over 2, where again, lambda prime equals lambda the actual lambda in air over the end of the film. Okay? Clear as mud? Let's do it one more time. The different problem. This time let's do constructive interference and actually put in numbers. Um, oh, sorry, Ting Yi. I was sitting there pounding on my microphone. All right. So, if it's constructive, does that mean that it makes it magnified or something? Or what no. It be oh, okay. Constru the difference between constructive and destructive. Constructive means we can see it. Destructive means we can't see that wavelength. All right. So, if it's destructive to um, green light, which is like between 580 and 640 nanometers, then... Um, if it's destructive interference, we can't see any green. And maybe just the yellow comes up or something like that. All, everything else is wiped out except for yellow. So let's take a look at this case. Um, so is this like, like um, colored glasses or something? Is that what you mean, the films? Or, or just any kind of optical. In fact, most of your cameras and stuff have non-reflective surfaces. They want all, they don't want anything to reflect out. So they want everything to transmit through it, okay? And so that way you get more power. You get more light coming in and you get better pictures and stuff like that. So that's what they're talking about. All right, or, or just a here's, here's a, here's a classic example. We've got a thin layer of oil, N equals 1.5, floats on water. Ah, we've already done destructive interference. I don't want to do destructive. I want to do constructive. Let's see, magnesium fluoride is frequently used as a lens coating making non-reflect, ah! Hold on a second. Well, you got the solar cell and it's destructive too, because it's a non-reflective film. So they're all non-reflective, so they're all destructive. All right, I kind of wanted to do one constructive one, but there aren't any. And, until I get to the ones that are too hard. And I'm not going to do one that's too hard. All right. Um, so that's good. We can stop there. Let's finish the one on your homework, though. Let's at least do that. So anyway, so what we had here, let's actually put in the numbers this time. Let's put in the numbers this time. All right. 
It says I have a solar cell, which is to have a non-reflective film of transparent material. Okay. In other words, we want we we don't we want to have complete when it goes through that. Um, some of it's going to be reflected off, of course. You're always going to have some reflection, okay? But if I can minimize that, in other words, if I, if I can um, have mostly destructive interference for the entire spectrum of light coming in, then that's, that's a good thing, all right? For, for lenses and stuff like that and cameras. So here we go. So here, let's, let's just start over here, all right? Start over. So here we go. We've got this. We've got this situation. All right, here's the film, and N equals 1.22, and the N down here of the solar um, is equal to, oh, something greater than 1.22, all right, and we have N of air, which is equal to 1.00, all right, in a second. There we go. We got it. Am I there? All right. So we got this coming back. We don't need a, uh, we don't need a number for the N that's greater than 1.2. Uh-uh. You just need to know that it's greater than 1.2. That's all you need to know. All right. Okay. And the only reason we have the one for air there is because we're just, I'm just, for, for, our solar cell, we're just saying that it's exposed to the air, is the light coming in. Now, if I put it underwater, if I put this thing underwater, all of a sudden, this thing would go to 1.33, and this would be 1.22, and this would be greater than 1.22, okay? All right, so let's take a look. So that is that, and we're going to be looking at a wavelength with um, 550 nanometers, lambda in air is equal to 550 nanometers, okay? Lambda in the air is equal to 550 nanometers. So lambda prime is equal to 550 over what? 1.22, exactly. 1.22, so that equals, there we go. So we got uh, 550 divided by 1.22 equals 451. So lambda prime equals 451 nanometers. All right, so now I want to find out how thick this film has to be. I want to find out what T is. So let's set up our equation. We go, all right, 2T and we want destructive So 2t plus, now let's, let's figure out what 1 and 2 are, because remember, what we're going to do is we're going to add up 1, whoops, can't see it all. I even got this newfangled extra double thick pen, too, just for today. Anyway, I found it. All right, so we got 1. Um, is there a phase shift for 1? Yep, sure is. Why? Why is there a phase shift? It's going from lower to higher, right? So there's a phase shift of lambda prime over 2. So I've got 450. Uh, well, let's just do the lambda prime over 2, and we'll put the lambda prime in when we're ready. Um, plus, what about for 2? Is there a phase shift? Yeah. Yep. Lambda prime over 2. And we're going to have our choice between 1 half lambda prime or three halves lambda prime, or five halves lambda prime, or what would be the next one in that series? No, it's nine, actually. I'm kidding. It's seven. Right. I was just, I was just feeling ornery. I don't know why, but there we go. All right. Okay. And it could go on for, for a long time. All right, so now. So we got 2t plus lambda prime equals, now which one of these should we pick for the minimum thickness? If we pick this one, we've already found out it'll be negative, right? So let's pick this one for the minimum thickness. 
we'll get three halves lambda prime. And so 2t equals uh, one half lambda prime, and t equals one fourth lambda prime, which would equal one fourth of 451. A half and a half is uh, okay. what? <laughs> I was waiting for someone to ask that question so I could embarrass them publicly. No. All right. Divided by four. 112. 112 what? 112.7. 113. What's the units? Nanometers. Nanometers. 112, 130. Is 120. Yes. Wait, whoa, whoa, hold on a second. Yeah, it's a phase shift with lambda over two. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. It, it's still lambda prime over two. It's still lambda prime over two. Yeah. 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 It, 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 yes. It causes, because this index of refraction is greater than this one, it causes a phase shift on the reflection. Right. A phase shift. Right. But of lambda over two. Yeah. Right. But if we call that lambda prime over two, then we're saying that it's wavelength is over two. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying, shouldn't we make this lambda over two? No. Uh, in other words, wait, I've got this going in air. It's staying in air. Why did you change it? Why did we? Because that's what we do. Um, no, no, it's the reflected ray. And it and it's and it's the same wavelength. It's been reflected like this, but I can't. I I am at a loss right now as to why. I've I don't have that sentence in the book where it's saying. And then it's like this because eh, it's escaped me. It's escaped me because I got so much into the mechanics, vice into the physics of this thing. I forgot why now. But it is. But it is. But that's an excellent question. Why isn't this lambda? instead of lambda over two, right, instead of lambda prime? It's a good question, and I'll have the answer Monday. Or my, I might even email it to everybody. All right, and then the people that aren't here are going to be, what the heck are they talking about? Anyway, all right, so, so that came out to be 113. All right, and so it would be different, though. The only thing that, what would be the only thing that would change if we did this? If I took n, is, this n down here is less than 1.22. What would change? It, exactly. We'd take away a phase shift. So if this takes place, then that one goes away. And then the one that's in question, why it's like this, stays. And why it's like that, I don't know right now. But I'll let you know. Okay. All right. So that's thin film, and that's always, that's always pretty much a class period to get through. It, it's just kind of tricky. But it's also... It's real important because it shows us when we get to diffraction grading and all that kind of stuff, we can fin it, we'll finish chapter 24 easily. In fact, Ting Yi, what was the title for today's lecture? What were, we, what were we supposed to cover? Polar, we're supposed to get to polarization? No way. That's all right, but leave it on there. It'll be all right. All right. Um, well, we can, uh, now nah, let's go ahead and go. You all are shifting. You're ready to go. I can tell. I was already letting the horses out of the barn. You can't say, nah, close the barn door. <laughs>